Can you spot fake news? Professional fact checkers can separate truth from fiction more accurately and faster than even the smartest among us. How do they do it? And how can we get the same results? Researchers at Stanford wanted to find out. So they set up a unique competition between professional fact checkers and regular people. Well, not that regular. One group was made up of scholars with a PhD in history. So professionals at evaluating sources for reliability. And a third group were Stanford students. The three groups went head to head. Fight. The first challenge was to look at articles online that looked similar, but in reality were written by very different organizations. For example, in one of the tasks, the volunteers were faced with two articles on bullying. One was by the American Academy of Pediatrics, the official organization of pediatricians in the US, with 66,000 members. The other article was by the American College of Pediatricians, which is a conservative advocacy group with a strong anti-gay ethos. They've been labeled a hate group by independent sources. They oppose same-sex marriage and adoption by gay couples, and they support conversion therapy, AKA curing the gay. So both organization names sound pretty official. Both websites look legit at first glance, but in reality, the two organizations are vastly different. Can our competitors tell the difference? Can they spot the fake news? The results were shocking. 100% of professional fact checkers chose the medical association as the more reliable source. And they did it within minutes. Historians were much less consistent. 50% chose the academy, 10% chose the advocacy group, and 40% weren't sure. And the students did abysmal. Only 20% chose the academy, 64% chose the advocacy group as their number one source. Other tasks involved finding the funding source behind a website or the parent organization behind a marketing campaign. Across all tasks, the professional fact checkers consistently came out on top, even though the other two groups are clearly made up of very intelligent, educated people. How did the pros do it? The researchers tracked their every action using screen capture software. They even had them speak out their thoughts out loud as they fact checked they found that the fact checkers consistently used some techniques that gave them an edge. For example, the students spent most of their time looking at the articles themselves. They paid a lot of attention to internal features of the websites, like the logos or the domain name, or whether the article was referenced or written by someone with a medical degree. They also valued whether they personally agreed with the arguments put forward in the article. The pro fact checkers had a completely different approach. They glanced at the article for a few seconds and immediately left. Rather than evaluate the article per se, or even the website, their priority was to learn more about the organization itself. They went to the About Us page of the website, they took a quick look, and then they left the site altogether and looked for independent information on the organization. This is called taking bearing. They stepped back and looked at the broad picture. Who is this organization and how do they fit into the overall context? Instead, the students dove deep into the content. They used what's called vertical reading. They went through the article top to bottom, paying close attention to the language and the arguments put forward. But the fact checkers relied on lateral reading. They opened new tabs on the browser to fact check the reliability of the source before taking a deep dive. The pros only paid attention to the article after they had done all that background work. As a result, they were able to pick up on nuances of the language of the text that escaped the students. The other technique that distinguished the pros was click restraint. The students navigated haphazardly, clicking whatever got their attention. When they ran a Google search, they tended to click the top results, even if they weren't the most informative. So the time allotted for the task ran out before they could get their answers. The fact checkers were much more deliberate and focused. They chose carefully which pages they visited, and they didn't waste time or get distracted. When they Google searched, they carefully scanned the results and spent much longer on the search page than the students. They chose which hits they clicked based on the source and the content of the snippets, the short descriptions on Google. As a result, they were much more effective and quick to form a general picture and separate reliable fact from shady sources. Now, obviously we can apply these techniques to many areas of our lives. When we're looking for scientific information online, whether it's nutrition or something else, we can take bearing by stepping back and getting a broad view of a topic before we dive deep into a specific source. We sometimes form an opinion based on the first thing we find, which tends to be whoever is best at social media or SEO or the most charismatic or whoever tells us what we want to hear. And then we latch on to those initial beliefs and resist any evidence to the contrary. 
but that strategy can lead to stagnation and prevent us from learning more. Now, it's important to point out that in science, we don't accept an idea reflexively just because the source is qualified, and we don't dismiss an idea reflexively just because the source is unqualified. We rely on evidence. But which evidence is shown to us and how it's presented can make a world of difference. That's how most of the confusion online around nutrition arises in the first place. People are often exposed to a sliver of evidence and then get into these bubbles where everybody just repeats the same thing. Stepping back and looking at the big picture is often all it takes to dispel confusion. Triangulating information between different sources and exposing ourselves to what we call totality of evidence. Doing this sounds like a lot more work, but the reality is it can save time. And in the case of medicine, it can save lives as well. Say.